Okay, the last elasticity I want to talk about is cross price elasticity of demand. Okay, cross because we're looking across two goods. Okay, we're looking at two goods together. So that's why we have a cross here. So cross elasticity of demand measures the responsiveness of quantity demanded of good A given a change in price of good B. Now we know okay, that there are two goods okay, which we can link together. Two types of goods that we link together. We've got complements and substitutes. Complements are linked together because we tend to buy these goods together. Substitutes are linked together because we can easily substitute our consumption between them. Okay, so Coke and Pepsi. Right, price of Coke goes up, we can just switch to Pepsi. They're very, very similar goods. They're substitutes. So that's why we're looking at the, now the relationship between the two. All right? So we know that for complements, when the price of one complement goes up, the demand for the other will shift to the left. What we're, what we're trying to work out well, how much will demand shift to the left for that complement good. Whereas for substitutes, when the price of a substitute goes up, demand for another one will shift to the right. But how much will it shift to the right? How much does quantity demanded respond, okay, given a change in price of another good? Alright? So that's the key thing. Good A, good B. And when we look at the equation, it makes logical sense. So XED, we're looking now at the percentage change in quantity demanded of one good, call it good A, given a change in price of another good, call it good B. Alright, so the price of um, gin, okay, the price of gin goes up. Right. By how much does the quantity demanded of tonic go down? Okay, complement goods, we expect that relationship. Right, how much? That's what XED tries to tell us. Okay, again, no calculation I want to do. It's a very simple calculation. You just stick in the same percentage change calculations as PED, um, work it out, stick into the equation, get your figures. Alright. But again, the signs are important. Just like with YED, the signs are very important. Why? Because the signs tell us the types of goods they are. Okay, so the positive XED figure tells you that the goods are substitutes, whereas the negative figure tells you that the goods are complements. Okay? But before I explain why, simple way to remember, just think, when you're approaching Christmas, party season. Okay, so party season near Christmas. I'm making this video, it is near Christmas, not that near Christmas, a month and a bit to go. But anyway, as you approach Christmas, party season. Positive substitutes, negative compliments. Okay, party season near Christmas. Alright, if you ever forget in an exam, it's brilliant to have in the back of your mind. But it makes logical sense as to why these signs um, are the way they are. Alright, so substitutes, let's take a substitute. The price of Coke goes up, okay, the price of Coke goes up, positive. Quantity demanded of Pepsi goes up, okay. Demand shifts, quantity increases. So positive, positive, positive. Okay, go the other way. The price of Coke goes down, quantity demanded of Pepsi goes down. Negative, negative gives you a positive. You can do the same for complements, alright, but it makes sense. Positive substitutes, negative complements. Party season near Christmas will never take you down, alright? And again, okay, we still use the number one as our key number. So again, regardless of the sign, greater than one, elastic. So when you worked out the signs, then ignore it and just look at the number. So greater than one, elastic, less than one, inelastic. But we can say more than that. Instead of just saying the goods have an elastic relationship, you can maybe say the goods, because they're greater than one, are closely related. That's really a better way to talk about the now, instead of elasticity. The goods have a close relationship or closely related. Whereas here, the goods have a weak relationship, okay, or a weakly related. Weak relationship probably sounds better, but anyway. Alright, when the figure is zero, there is absolutely no relationship. Okay, so, I don't know, the price of printers goes up. There's not going to be an impact on the demand for shoes, is there? There is sometimes no relationship between two goods. And if the figure is zero, it tells you there's no relationship. In truth, the, close, the closer the number is to zero, essentially, the, the less that relationship actually exists. Okay? But greater than one, just think, close relationship, less than one. Oh, I forgot the one here. Less than one. Yes, it's inelastic, but that shows a weak relationship. Okay, and that's all there is to know with uh, cross elasticity. Again, a very simple um, idea, and 
you can see the recurrence of all these ideas. So I hope that does it for you. See you next time. Thank you.